Hello everyone, and welcome to your sixth Apple debugging tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the thread sanitizer in Xcode. Now, there are many sanitizers built into Xcode, and we'll probably talk about all of them at some point in this series, but today we're going to be focusing specifically on the thread sanitizer. Now, the thread sanitizer is useful for monitoring your application while it's running, and it will notify you when there are mutations that occur across multiple threads on the same object. So for example, if you have um, two or more threads and maybe they're trying to access the same area of memory or the same data structure, the thread sanitizer can actually notify you to say, hey, you're trying to mutate or access this thing across multiple threads, and this is probably not a safe thing to do. Because generally speaking, most of the data structures that we deal with are not thread safe. Um, they are not built to be thread safe, and so uh, changing those values and mutating them across multiple threads is generally an unsafe thing to do. And you may only end up finding this out in a crash report, for example. So the thread sanitizer, though, is a way that we can actually run our application and it can monitor for these cases that it sees where there could be an unsafe operation happening. And your application may not crash as a result of this every time, but the thread sanitizer can at least tell you, hey, you're trying to read and write uh, to this particular value at the same time on different threads, and this is probably not what you intend to be happening. So uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now. The example that we have in front of us is very simple, um, but I think the point will uh, hold pretty well. So there's not really any grand structure to this, but it's just a simple Cocoa application that has really only this code here. So feel free to follow along in that way. Now, so far, this application is only running on a single thread. We're running on the main thread, which if I go ahead and run this application, we'll see that we basically just append a bunch of strings to this array. And in this one section, we append a thousand strings. In this one, we also append a thousand strings. And then after one second, I'm just printing out the count of how many strings we have in the array. So this works fine. Obviously, we're only accessing images on a single thread, so there is no problem here. Now, let's say, for example, that we have a different queue, and generally you would never write this type of code, but there are obviously cases where you dispatch work to a background thread, right? If you're doing, say, a network request or you're parsing an image or something along these lines, it's quite common to run this work on some kind of thread that is not main so that the work is not blocking your main thread. Now, if I uh, do something like q1.async, and I'm gonna put this nice for loop code into here, now, what's gonna occur here is that we have this separate dispatch queue, right? So I've made a, a private dispatch queue here, and it's going to uh, add this big code block here where it's gonna run this for loop. And so I'm gonna add this uh, block of work to this queue, and this is going to be async, so it's gonna return immediately, and we enqueue that work. Then we're gonna come back to the main thread and run our for loop here. So here's a situation where we have two different threads occurring or doing work at the same time, right? We're gonna have the main thread doing this for loop, and then we're gonna have some other thread essentially doing this for loop here. And we can see what happens when we do this. So let's go ahead and stop and run again. And we can see that we actually end up getting a fatal error. Now, the reason for the error can actually be different depending on the situation. But in this particular case, we can see there's a fatal error we had an unsafe mutable pointer deinitialize with a negative count. So something really bad happened internally. It's not too clear what exactly that is, but we can check on the, the backtrace here so we can see on our main thread we had an array. We try to append to that array, and we can see if we click on that here that it's uh, this guy here. And we were trying to append something to this array. We're trying to make a copy. And, you know, nothing here looks particularly wrong other than, you know, it's hitting a fatal error. But, um, you know, appending to an array should be fine in most cases. The real issue is that we have this other thread, right? So this thread 8, which is uh, the thread that our Q1 is in queuing onto, uh, we can see here that thread um, 
thread eight is also going through its own work and it's iterating over the images array at the same time. Um, so, well, it's actually accessing, I should say. So um, it's not clear from this backtrace, but basically we're iterating over the array and uh, by accessing this array, we end up, uh, you know, we're, we're accessing the array at the same time that we're mutating the array on a different thread. And so because arrays are not thread safe in this way, we end up with a fatal error. Now, uh, how can we detect this in a way that's not just a crash? Well, luckily, uh, this, you know, this backtrace is pretty helpful for us. It is pretty clear what is going on, but there is, uh, like, you know, what the whole point of this tutorial is, is a thread sanitizer. Now, uh, to find this guy, let me just follow this again. So if we go up to our little scheme editor here, so we can go up to whatever your target is, hit edit scheme. And if we go to diagnostics under run diagnostics, there is a, uh, so there's a group of runtime sanitizers here. And the one we want to enable is this thread sanitizer. So I'm gonna check that box on and I'm gonna run this code again. Now, if I run this code again, we can see that I'm actually going to have this thread sanitizer kick in and it does tell me that there's a swift access race in this closure. So it is giving me a little better of hint of what is actually occurring here, right? And because it's the thread sanitizer that's telling me, obviously uh, we have a little more information to go off of. Now, uh, if I hit this little question mark over here, it actually gives me this little uh, overview of what, how, what, what we're dealing with. And it's actually pretty informative to say that uh, we're dealing with races in collections. And so that is exactly what we're dealing with here is that there's a race condition in appending or reading from this collection. Now, uh, to make this thread sanitizer actually be useful, other than saying uh, this information here, we can go up to the top and click on this little, uh, you know, purple exclamation mark, which will bring us to the runtime uh, warning section. Now, here, uh, this is the thread sanitizer telling us what is occurring. So we can see uh, mostly that the first two are, I'd, I'd say, the most beneficial. Now, the first two uh, little sections here are telling us the two places in which this thing is trying to be accessed at the same time. So we can see that we had this mutating access by thread six, and that was occurring in this location here. And then we had this mutating access by thread one, and that was occurring in this section here, uh, highlighted there. So the thread sanitizer is a nice way to identify these cases where this occurs. Now, uh, because we had this crash, you might be thinking, well, the crash pretty much told me this information already. And in this case, it is maybe a little uh, more obvious on what happens, but the thread sanitizer does give us this a little additional information on uh, what is the problem. Now, a different case though is, uh, let's say we weren't using this array. So I'm gonna change this just to be a count and I'll make it uh, just zero. And instead of doing an append, we're just going to increment it. So I'll increment it by one. And I'm gonna do the same in this section here. And then I'm just gonna print out the count. Okay, so um, let me go and just, I'm gonna turn off the thread sanitizer here just for a second. So let's just say that we didn't have the thread sanitizer running in this situation. I'm gonna go ahead and run this and let's see what the results are that we get. Now I run this and everything seems to check out pretty well. We've got this count of 2000, which is in fairness what I expect to get. But let's try and run this a few more times here and see if that's always what ends up happening. And as you can see, uh, interestingly enough, it's not. So this time I got the total of 19, 48, even though our for loops right in total should accumulate to be 2000 as a total value. And if I keep running this, you'll see that the value is probably going to change every time, right? This time it's 1937. And this is a much more difficult issue to track down, right? Because there is no crash, right? As far as we know, everything occurred, you know, the program is running correctly. There is no exceptions or fatal errors. And so we would obliviously just kind of ignore this, but there would be this weird, uh, you know, unexpected behavior that is occurring in the application. 
Now let's go back to turning on that thread sanitizer now to see how the thread sanitizer can be extremely useful in this particular scenario. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this one more time and the thread sanitizer will immediately find this saying, hey, again, you had this access race and um, it will tell me what that is if I go to that runtime section again. So here we can see that uh, basically the same thing that we saw before, right, where we had, okay, you're mutating the access on thread two, and then you're mutating access on thread one as well. So, you know, obviously it'll give you the two locations. Here's one of them. If I click on the other one, it'll show me that it's this location changing that as well. Now, you know, obviously when the code is right next to each other, this is relatively easy to find, but if your code is, you know, which is more common in full applications, your code is spread across multiple classes and uh, multiple things are handling this asynchronous code. Uh, this is an extremely useful tool to tell you where somebody might be accessing some kind of shared state. And in this case, our count, right, is the shared state between these two threads. So uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for the thread sanitizer, but it's an extremely useful tool. And I find uh, there's a lot of people that don't know about these sanitizers in particular, but they're, uh, if you're trying to track down a particular issue that you suspect might be related to some threading, and you might find this, um, you know, if you're trying to debug this, maybe you've gone ahead and, you know, try to get rid of some asynchronous code and you found out, well, hey, that actually causes my problem, right? The thread sanitizer can really narrow down exactly where you're accessing something and tell you, hey, this spot here is conflicting with this other spot that you're also mutating the same object. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in an upcoming tutorial. See you then.